For me, this was a fairly easy thing to do. Um, I still uh, touch base with my kids who run my business and I was there for 37 years. And uh, the number of entities, uh, NFIB, it drags in 93,000 businesses, tens of millions of jobs going to be impacted by it. And remember when we were trying to help through the CARES Act and other stuff, we were spending a lot of money to keep employees in their jobs up to 500 employees. And now, the way this place works, we've lowered that threshold to 100. And the number of people, when I was home on break, waiting for this shoe to drop, and we should see the formal rule any day. Um, I'd be surprised if we don't see it today or tomorrow, unless they start to backpedal based upon a lot of other stuff that's occurring. But Axios did a poll recently, Axios, that what do you think if you're forced to take a, a vaccine and if you don't, you get fired? 14%. That means that two-thirds of Democrats think that's a bad idea. So we're here today to talk about in our own uh, states uh, how this is going to impact all I can tell you is that most businesses took COVID serious from the get-go. Uh, they wanted to keep their employees and their customers safe. And now, right after we found a rhythm to get through it, and things are looking like we got it in the rearview mirror, at least we've all learned to live with it in a responsible way, could be the biggest wallop that small businesses have taken in the whole journey. So that's what we're here to talk about today. And uh, Senator Solomon, um, you wanting to weigh sure. in? Sure, thank you, Mike. Well, I want to thank Senator Braun for uh, the work he's doing on this uh, issue and what we're going to be doing here with regard to the Congressional Review Act resolution. But um, the President's action on this vaccine mandate, they are unprecedented. Um, and almost certainly, in my view, amount to unconstitutional overreach. The idea that one man, the President of the United States, can force Americans to choose between getting a vaccine or keeping their job and putting food on the table for their family undermines literally all principles of liberty found in our Constitution. And Senator Braun just touched on another important principle that this Biden mandate undermines. Last year, at the height of the pandemic, we all worked together, Democrats, Republicans, the Trump administration, to provide le relief to American citizens and businesses struggling to survive the pandemic. We did this through the CARES Act and many other pieces of bipartisan relief legislation for Americans. A core principle of all this legislation was that if an employer, say an airline or even a small business, received federal COVID relief, that that employer was required to keep their employees on the payroll. They could not fire their employees. Keeping the bond and connection between employers and employees was one of the most important bipartisan principles of all our legislative action during 2020 with the Trump administration. Now what do we have? Joe Biden has taken a sledgehammer to this approach, mandating that employers fire their employees. It's a complete 180. Oh, and let's do it right before the holidays. And if they don't do what he says on vaccines, then they will be fired. Look, I think we all want to put this pandemic behind us. I've gotten vaccinated. I think all my colleagues have. I've encouraged others in consultation with their doctors to get a vaccine. But we live in a constitutional republic, not a dictatorship. And the president simply does not have the authority to require private companies to fire their employees. As already mentioned, the practical aspects of this unconstitutional order will be profound. More worker shortages, worse supply chain disruptions, less public safety that we have now in our cities, and increased pilot shortages in our skies, all right before the holidays. 
So we're doing our part in the Congress with this Congressional Review Act resolution that Senator Braun and I and many others here are co-sponsoring. But here's the other key thing. We are respectfully asking other Americans to consider to do their part as well. What do I mean by that? To all business leaders and others in positions of authority, like police chiefs, who are subject to this unconstitutional edict, we ask that you hold off from firing your employees, your loyal employees, who helped our nation get through this pandemic. Wait until the numerous lawsuits against this federal vaccine mandate have been resolved. And I will say, as Alaska Senator, I was proud to see just last week the Alaska Railroad rescinded its vaccine mandate order and it said it was going to wait for the outcome of litigation. So we believe, I believe certainly, that others should follow their lead. We know that such action is difficult. The feds have a lot of power. This can take courage. But we think it's the right thing to do for our country and our fellow American citizens. The American people, and indeed Tennesseans, are not anti-vax. What they are is anti-socialism. And what they see happening with this vaccine mandate, this one-size-fits-all, government going to tell you what to do, how to do, when to do, they see this as a part of the Democrats' agenda to take control of your life, cradle to grave, daylight to dark, 24-7, 365. And they're pushing back. And thank goodness that they are. And I'm grateful that Senator Braun is leading this effort to help push back on behalf of the American people. They do not want a one-size-fits-all mandate that is going to adversely impact 80 million workers. Now, this is at a time when we have 10.4 million jobs that are unfilled. And we have families that are struggling to come back from the pandemic and people that are trying to get back to work. And in order to push this socialist agenda, this government control of health care, what do they do? A one-size-fits-all vaccine mandate that says, if you don't get the jab, Joe Biden is going to get you fired from your job. And that's the message that they're sending, that the vaccine and getting a shot is more important than you being able to provide for your family. The vaccine and getting a shot is more important to the Democrats than you being able to talk to your doctor to make a decision if this is going to be right for you, if you're medically able to get this. And I've talked to dozens of Tennesseans, whether they are first responders or law enforcement or healthcare workers, airline workers, trucking companies, and I hear the same thing over and over. I'm glad President Donald Trump got our agencies and our pharmaceutical companies working together, that we got a vaccine, that we got it to market, that people that can take it are going to take it. And many are. But the point is, don't force someone to do this against their will. Allow them to talk to their doctor, to look at their family medical history, and decide if this is going to be a fit for them. Uh, thank you for uh, being here this, this morning and uh, addressing, allowing us to address in front of you is a hugely important topic. Is, isn't the question who is best to decide whether or not a person should be vaccinated other than that person in consultation with his or her physician? No one would think it's the best result to have something in Washington, D.C. dictate whether you or a member of your family uh, must be vaccinated. No one would think this decision should be taken away from Wichita, Kansas, and decided in Washington, D.C. as to whether or not, in order to come to work, you have to be vaccinated. 
Decisions made closest to home, those decisions which are particularly personal, made closest to the home, are the best. They meet the needs of the person, the person who should or should not be vaccinated, and they meet the needs of the workforce and the employer and the workplace. This has become uh, perhaps the most topical conversation in Kansas today is the vaccine mandate and the consequences that it has to individuals, the workers who are contemplating what life will be like without their current job. And secondly, their employer who desperately needs them to be at work. We've worked hard to grow the Kansas economy. We're working hard to expand the opportunities for Kansans to have good jobs. And those uh, efforts are paying off. There are great opportunities for employment today, but too many people are making the decision that they cannot, because of the mandate, continue to work. The consequences in Kansas are, are, are really damaging, and I would ask the President to not be tone deaf. President Biden step forward and alter this, eliminate this mandate, and let the decisions be made back home between employee and employer. This certainly is a matter of freedom, personal freedom, the choice to decide about whether or not you should be vaccinated should be the individual. But it's also about the ability for this country to remain a world power, to remain safe and secure as a nation, and to have a growing economy that creates opportunities and the American dream to be alive and well. At a time in which our international challenges are so great, our adversaries are on the march, and would love to see the diminution of the United States, love to see problems and challenges here. The vaccine mandate contributes to those challenges for us as we try to compete in a global economy and maintain our national defense as China, Russia, and others keep uh, uh, advancing their cause to the detriment of Americans' freedom. We have fought and live. Veterans Day is coming up. Many have fought for freedom across the world and certainly for Americans. And here we have a mandate that eliminates the freedom. Uh, Mr. President, do something different. Uh, reverse course. And then in the absence of that, I would ask my Democrat colleagues to join most Republicans in support of Senator Braun's uh, Congressional Review Act of this uh, new regulation coming from the Office of Management and Budget. Thank you. Senator Hogan. Uh, Senator Langford's got a committee. Oh, here. sure. Go ahead, Bill James. Absolutely. Thank you. I appreciate that. September the 9th, President Biden stepped up and announced to the nation that he's losing patience with the country, and so he demanded that everyone steps up and gets the vaccine and laid a mandate down. Federal workers, federal contractors, members of the military, and on private businesses. And he defined that as businesses with 100 people or more. He literally reached into every company and said, I, I don't care how you run your company. His statement was, I'm the President of the United States. I'm now going to tell your company what to do. It has caused chaos across the country and across our economy, and it's because of a tremendous amount of frustration in a lot of families and employers in my state in Oklahoma. Listen, the vast majority of the people in my state have been vaccinated. They've chosen to do that. I've been vaccinated. But the vast majority of the people that have been vaccinated also say that was a personal choice that I made. I want others to have the same ability to have the same choice that I made in their life as well. We've got 40 plus million people that have already had COVID and have recovered. They have natural immunity. We have people that are in cancer treatments and other things that are saying, this is not right. I have a friend of mine that his son has had long-term long COVID and after months and months and months of a very difficult long recovery is now on the other side of it. And now his employer is saying, if you want to stay employed, you need to have this vaccine. And he has no idea how his body's going to react to this. He literally has to choose between his own doctor telling him don't do this or keeping his job because President Biden has determined he's going to be the nation's dad and he's going to tell everyone what they have to do. That's not who we are as a country. That's not how we should operate. That's not the job of the president is to go instruct everyone. I've also spoken to a lot of folks that work in union shops in my state. And those union members are telling me that they've gone to their stewards, their, fo their folks locally, and have said, I need somebody to represent me because I don't want to be able to do this. I don't want to take this vaccine for whatever personal reason that they have. And they're finding out that the union bosses here in Washington, D.C. are saying, no, we're going to salute to President Biden. And they're literally not representing even the challenges of the individuals that are on the floor. 
those folks are incredibly frustrated because they thought their union represented them, but they're finding out actually their union represents the Democrat Party and whatever the Democrat president wants to be able to do, regardless of it violates their union contract. Literally, the president's reaching into every collective bargaining agreement across the country and is saying, I'm adding a new feature to your collective bargaining agreement, whether you want it there or not. This is not the United States of America that we all know and love, where individuals have personal responsibility and personal freedoms. We live and die by our own decisions on what we do with our own lives and with our own future. And this president is saying, no, you don't. You're going to live by my decisions. That's not who we are. And quite frankly, as Oklahomans, as I've told a lot of people, if I stood up and told everybody they had to come by my house to get a $100 bill, there would be a lot of Oklahomans that would say, I don't want it because you told me I have to do it. <laughs> there are a lot of folks that I've talked to that said they were willing to do the vaccine until there was a federal mandate on this. And now they're digging in because we're Americans and we're a stubborn breed. That's what has made us the most prosperous economy in the world is because we're a stubborn people that works hard and has personal responsibility. And it is not the job of the president to take that away from the American people. And it is certainly the cry of the people of Oklahoma to say, do whatever we can to stop it. Now, we can't bring up a bill in Speaker Pelosi's house, and we can't demand that Chuck Schumer takes up a bill to be able to take this down because we're all part of legislation, but we can push and get a Congressional Review Act to be able to get this mandate pulled out as soon as they put it in. And we believe the reason they've delayed putting out the instructions from the Department of Labor so long is because they're afraid of this exact thing that we're doing. They don't want us to be able to challenge this and put everyone on record to say we want to encourage people to take a vaccine but not mandate a vaccine because that's the American way. So we are putting this forward right now to try to bring this to a head and to say let's settle this today. So I was home in North Dakota over the weekend, got around the state, and I heard about this issue more than any other issue, hands down. And from people from all walks of life, older people, younger people, moms and dads, uh, clearly this is something that Americans are very concerned about. And, and they want to be able to make their health care decisions in consultation with their health care providers. Of course, vaccines are important tools. I've been vaccinated. But that's a decision that people and their families make in consultation with their own health care providers, not as part of some kind of mandate. And think of what's going on here now. In essence, the president is directing uh, companies, private companies, to in essence go in and enforce this vaccine mandate on their employees or fire their employees. Clearly, that goes beyond civil rights and constitutional rights. And uh, so that's what we're doing with this CRA, uh, Congressional Review Act. It was designed for this kind of situation. And uh, we hope that uh, we have enough support to pass it. But essentially what it would do is once Department of Labor, OSHA comes forward with a regulation saying, okay, businesses, now you have to go enforce these mandates on your employees or terminate your employees. Essentially, the CRA a would say, no, you don't have that authority. That goes way beyond your authority, and uh, we nullify that regulation. That's the objective here. And so uh, we, we hope to have enough support to pass this CRA. But the other thing I want to say is, you know, this is just one part of our uh, pushback on these mandates. We also strongly support the legislation that will be moving to the courts, supported by the states and various other groups, obviously employers, our support as well. Uh, but clearly this is a case where the courts need to enjoin this action by the administration, this mandate, and say, no, this does not pass constitutional muster. This does supersede your authority. So enjoin that action up front, adjudicate it, and then strike down uh, the regulation. And I think the courts will do that. And that's why it's so important that we have conservative jurists on the bench, meeting judges that will uphold the law, not legislate from the bench. And so whether it's this issue or other issues like it, that's why it's so important. That is the role of the courts, is to make sure that the, execu the executive does not supersede its authority in these kind of situations and that it protect 
protects people's civil and constitutional rights. You know, guys, this is pretty simple. The decision to be vaccinated should be up to the individual and not to the government. I have chosen to be vac vaccinated, and uh, that was my choice after meeting with my medical physician. But a blanket mandate is just not the answer. Government should be not sh should not be forcing this on hardworking Americans who just want to maintain their jobs and to have to choose between a vaccine and a livelihood. And it will only exacerbate the staffing and supply chain that we are having such issues with. You know, I'm a mom, I'm a wife, I go to the grocery store every weekend and see those empty shelves because of the supply chain and so many, many instances. But I think the president should be addressing the supply chain and not just giving Americans pink slips right before the holidays get here. This is not American. We should be able to make our own choices. And, um, you know, this Biden's big government knows best policies. It has divided this country more. And uh, we need to be coming together. We need to be overcoming this crisis of COVID-19. And it definitely should be up to the American people of their choice, of their health, of their medical decisions, and not President Joe Biden's. Good morning. Uh, I'm Fred Keller. I represent Pennsylvania's 12th Congressional District. Uh, I'm also the ranking member on the Workforce Protection Subcommittee of the House uh, Education Labor Committee. And uh, I really want to thank Senator Braun for, uh, for holding this press conference and for his work and, and, his, and his fellow senators' work on the Congressional Review Act to get out ahead of the rule that's coming out from the Biden administration. We're doing the same thing in the House. I will be introducing uh, this in the House. And every Republican member on our committee is behind the support of this. And what we want to do is we want to make sure that Americans have the freedom to live their life as guaranteed in the Constitution. And you've heard from it, this is not just a Pennsylvania problem. You've heard from the senators and it, 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 from Alaska to Oklahoma to Pennsylvania, it, it's an American problem. And what we need to do is we need to make sure that President Biden gets the message loudly and clearly. That he can't just do an executive order or have a rule put out and then make America's job creators enforce his will upon the American people. Think about this. You have one person saying this is what's going to happen. Much like he's done in many of the other things with, with energy, with our uh, inflation, everything he's been doing, he's been going it alone and hasn't been consulting my colleagues in the Senate, us in the House. If we wanted one person to have that kind of power, 245 years ago, we would not have declared independence. We are America. And the citizens that we represent, the states that our senators represent, deserve to have their input heard by this president. So what we're here today is we're going to make sure that the Biden administration understands that the people of America are hardworking, thoughtful, and he needs to trust our job creators, our employers, that they can run a safe work environment and not have to put this mandate in. Certainly the people that work in these businesses believe that, or they wouldn't be going to work every day. They wouldn't be requesting this not to happen. I've talked to job creators, I've talked to people that go to work every day in Pennsylvania. And you know what they're saying? I don't need the government telling me what's best for me and my family. And as was said so very eloquently here today, we're doing this right before the holidays. We have supply chain issues, we have an inflation crisis, and we have a president that isn't willing to listen to the people for whom he works. So what I'm saying right now is I appreciate the opportunity to be here today with the senators and Senator Braun for what he's, what he's doing here. We're committed to making sure that we are standing up for every American's rights in everything we do. And this is just the first step in what we need to do to make sure that your rights are protected. Thank you. Yeah. Well, good morning, everybody. And Senator Braun, thank you so much for leading this charge. I support the vaccine. I support the vaccine, but not the mandate. 
I support the vaccine, not the mandate. And I hope President Biden was listening to the people of Virginia yesterday. In a state that he won by double digits, a Democrat governor lost. I think the Virginia people were telling the president, we still value our freedoms, our individual liberties. I hope the president heard loud and clear to never get between a mama bear and her cubs. And whether the issue is the, our school curriculum, guardrails for our school curriculum, or if the issue is a vaccine for our children, or maybe making that choice between a jab or a job for those children's parents that the president is listing that we still value our individual liberties. I want the people of Kansas to know I'm up here working just to protect those civil liberties, all of our God-given rights that we've been given. I want the people of Kansas, I want Congress, I want the president to know that we are gonna use every tool in our toolbox, every arrow in our quiver to stop Joe Biden's unlawful vaccine mandate, including, if we have to, stopping cloture on the CR to fund the government unless they take out this language which harms hardworking Americans. You know, it was just months ago that we asked heroes to run to the sound of this battle, to this epidemic, a time when we didn't know what the consequences were, what the morbidity and the mortality was from this virus. We asked nurses and healthcare workers, emergency responders to run to the sound of this battle. We asked truck drivers to drive our supplies. We asked people in the meatpacking plants to keep that meat being processed. We asked people at Wolf Creek Energy Plant to keep their energy going, to keep the electricity running for our homes. And now those people feel like they're about to get a slap in the face, that they're no longer essential employees, obviously. Perhaps 20% of Americans have chosen not to take this vaccine. And again, I encourage them to take that vaccine but there's still gonna be some that don't. And that's gonna lead, once they're fired or separated, it's gonna to lead to more inflation. It's gonna exacerbate an already horrible situation with our job shortage, plug up more supply chains, and again, it's gonna to lead to inflation. You know, as a physician myself, I value the sanctity of the physician-patient relationship. I've taken care of thousands of people with viruses. And if I've learned one thing, that one virus doesn't impact everybody the same way. And that's why patients should have the right to sit down with their doctor to talk about COVID-19, what are the risks to, to, to me, to my health, versus what are the risks from this vaccine, and allow that individuality to continue that America has come to enjoy. I think the CRA is a great way uh, to respond to President Biden. Again, it's one tool in the tool shed. We're going to do everything we can to stop President Biden's unlawful, unconstitutional vaccine mandate. Thank you. Thank you, Roger. So we're about out of time, but um, number one, there are 41 Republicans already on this. The other nine want to see the text. I get, think a good portion of them uh, once it's released today or tomorrow, or, uh, who knows when, we'll, we'll join as well. It's the only tool, along with what Roger's talking about, that formally, though, puts everyone on record. You know, are you for it or are you against it? And you've heard the case be made here. This is a subject of personal liberty, being able to make these kinds of decisions yourself and not the heavy hand of government coming forward. So. May have time for a question or two. Uh, go ahead. Uh, two quick ones. Uh, first of all, you know, Senator Marshall kind of talked a little bit about this, about uh, this vaccine mandate and the other mandates that, that the Biden administration has put out. What effect do you think that this had, the impact it had on the election itself from yesterday? Well, I think education was the issue in Virginia, and that was due to a uh, um, point of view there where the Secretary of Education was on record is saying that parents aren't the primary stakeholders. Uh, you know, I gave him that opportunity to retract that statement. Who ever thought we'd hear that? And when you get to be that forceful uh, through your cabinet, uh, through edicts like this, it's scaring people. Uh, you know, when I was at home, the number of folks that came to me on this issue, and maybe the IRS issue of, you know, wanting to be able to look at any bank account where you got $600 transaction, now they've changed that. Maybe they'll see the light and see that most Americans draw the line when you tell them either or. And do you feel that this is momentum going into the 2022 election? I think so. I mean, uh, when you were 
uh, going in with a place where you were supposed to maybe win by double digits and you look at what happened in Virginia and New Jersey's too close to call, uh, that should be what maybe will get President Biden just to pull this thing back. You know, before he has another embarrassment of where he's piling one bad decision on top of another. Hashtag Mama Bear. There you go. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for including me. I appreciate it. Yeah. Anything we can do to be helpful, let us know. We'll just say uh, once the ruling hits, we're going to move. So. Okay. Likewise. And like, okay. we have all the Republicans on the committee. Cool. Support. Yeah. 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 I think we've got something here, and it's our only formal tool mm -hmm. that we can use to get people on record. So that and the microphone. And that too. Yeah. Thanks. See you.